good morning to you all i welcome to you to our uh, webinar for today uh, mr rupam mahanta mahanta would present the webinar on bearing capacity analysis of jackup foundation spot camp and on bottom stability of offshore jack jacket platforms Mr. Rupam Mahanta is a general manager, civil, with Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Limited. He did graduation in civil engineering and post graduation in soil mechanics from Assam Engineering College, Guwahati. He started his professional career in 1993 as a civil in civil construction engineer. Subsequently, he has been working in the area of offshore geotechnical engineering for the last 18 years. mainly in the area of offshore geotechnical investigation offshore foundation analysis and life extension studies for ong's offshore platforms he is currently working as head of the geotechnical section in ongc's institute of engineering and ocean technology we call it as ieot here at navi mumbai he has authored about 25 research papers on various aspects of offshore geotechnics such as offshore pile analysis geotechnical investigation jackup foundation cpt based pile capacity offshore mud camp foundation etc he has independently coded a number of offshore geotechnical programs such as leg penetration and punch through analysis of offshore jackup api cpt based pile axial capacity mud mat bearing capacity actual load movement of pile based on non linear tz data non linear py data based on api recommendations to name a few some of his programs are officially used for ongc's offshore geotechnical works mr mahanta is also a member of tc304 of issmge he has been associated with international joint Uh, industry research project on cpt based pile capacity currently being operated by ngi oslo and he has worked with a number of ngi experts for in oslo for over 2 months mr mahanta is also winner of innovative awards individual from cmd ongc i welcome mr rupam mahanta for his presentation I have known him for last, oh, I think, over a decade now, decade, decade and a half, for many years. So I think when I first joined IIT Bombay, probably, uh, you know, he's, he's he's one of the first few uh, I had an opportunity to, you know, work with him and see his laboratory, his setup. So before I begin, I think uh, there is a, a waiting room lobby, and uh, I I'm, I actually was trying to uh, ad directly admit the people, but I think I have to admit them. So in between. i would be looking at the lobby one by one okay mr mahanta please yeah good morning thank you professor junaiza and uh, thank you all the participants i welcome all of you to this presentation i was invited by dr junaiza he is a very good friend of mine since a long time as he have already described and i'm happy and honored to be invited like this and uh, this presentation is as already has been spoken Uh, it's uh, on bearing capacity analysis of jackup foundation which we call spotcan for independent legged jackups and also on bottom stability of offshore jacket platforms as you know there are more than 200 offshore jacket platforms uh, owned by ongc even more than 300 if you speak about offshore jacket structures uh, if we uh, count all the operators in indian offshore so these are important areas of offshore geotechnical which uh, i will be presenting for about 1 hour and uh, please feel free to discuss any issue during the presentation or uh, you can ask questions afterwards also as is uh, guided by dr junaiza so i will uh, share the screen now So is it feasible full screen mode 
I think not yet. Not yet. It's visible now. No, not yet. Your share screen is not visible. Yes, now it's coming. Now it's coming. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you can start the presentation now. Yes, please. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yes, I'm ready already. Okay, uh, this presentation has been divided into two parts as uh, we have selected two topics. It will be covered for nearly half an hour. And uh, I'll share my experience because I have worked here for last 18 years and uh, encountered many cases and also developed a few computer programs on these two topics. So I do not know all the participants, but I understand many of the geotechnical experts are there, including professors, and which uh, I have also learned a lot of things from IIT Bombay professors. And uh, this uh, about Jacob Rigg, I'll first introduce because many may be new to this uh, Officer Foundation because these are not taught normally in our engineering colleges uh, in geotechnical. So Jacob Rigs are the mobile offshore platforms which are exclusively used uh, mainly for drilling of uh, wells in the offshore. And why it is called Jacob? Because the hull with respect to the legs can be moved up or down uh, with the help of jacks, which are there uh, with all the legs. And normally these are three-legged units. Uh, all the modern units are mostly, mostly three-legged. Um, there are contrast exceptions, uh, like Sagar Samrat, which was the first rig owned by UNGC uh, that had four legs and it was self-propelled also. And normally nowadays, most of the offshore jackup units are towed to site. They are not self-propelled. And uh, these are primarily used for drilling and work over, work over operation for uh, offshore uh, purpose for hydrocarbons. And uh, there are some other purposes for which uh, it is used like geotechnical investigation in coastal areas, then offshore construction. And uh, early production system also it is used because uh, if we have to put one field for producing hydrocarbon, oil and gas, then to make or install a production platform takes a lot of time. So in the meantime, to uh, go for early production from the field, uh, we have uh, converted some of the jackups to MOPU, MOPU means Mobile Offshore Production Unit. So some modifications are done and the foundation is checked whether the, it is safe to be deployed at a particular site. Then it is deployed for quick production from the fill till the time other infrastructure is created in the offshore. Jackups are also, can be, it can be used for living quarters uh, for offshore. Uh, this is the picture which uh, we see from the, uh, this is towing of the jackup. Uh, for installation at the site. This is the Wendy's picture. And we can see three tugboats pulling the jack up, which is floating condition, in floating condition. It will be positioned in a platform and bottom figure, we can see this is the wellhead platform uh, where a jack up is installed. And uh, by doing this operation, it is positioned exactly at the intended uh, coordinates. And then uh, the hull is raised and uh, the drilling is uh, started or some work of operation on existing wells. So there is preloading actually during the installation because the foundation has to be tested for its safety as per the requirement of uh, international guidelines and uh, from certifying agencies also, these things are considered very serious about the safety issues. And uh, without clearance from certifying agencies, uh, no jackup can be installed in the site. And all the installations take place in fair weather, weather condition when the environmental loads are very, very less. So 
it is pre preloaded before the hull is uh, completely raised the air gap then increases and uh, before starting the operation it is fully tested that way the foundation and when the operation is over it is the hull is again lowered to the sea surface and legs are pulled up because of the buoyancy it will give reactions for the legs to be pulled up from the soil and then the jack up is again moved from that side to other sides now these are two pictures where on the right picture we can see the jack up this is a winch jack up which is drilling at an exploratory location so there are basically two kinds of drilling actually depending on the locations this is exploratory location where there is no existing platform uh, here the conductor uh, which is the first pipe which is uh, put into the seabed through which the drilling is carried out the first pipe is driven it is 30 inch pipe still open ended and then drilling is uh, carried out to examine about the availability of oil and gas any other testing of the reservoir and uh, then this is a drilling this is also when this jackup this is a wellhead platform where the wells are already there and the jackup is positioned rig is the rig is uh, positioned on the top of the wells and then drilling operation is carried out now regarding the foundation of jackups uh, there are basically two types of foundations one is that spud can which is the foundation at the base of its leg of an independent legged jackup and at the bottom we can see another foundation that is called mat it is mat supported rig where all the legs are connected to a common mat of large area and that gives the record stability when the jackup unit is placed uh, on the sea floor and this is generally meant for very soft soft kind of soil and it has some limitations world over uh, the rigs which are deployed in the offshore mostly the rigs are spud can supported rigs and uh, the equivalent diameter of the spud can is generally 10 to 20 meter uh, size and uh, we have about uh, 27 offshore jackup rigs in operation in our indian offshore from wnc side and there may be some others from other operators so as we can see the foundation size is very large so with the large kind of foundation uh, size and its uh, peculiar shape so there is a lot of things inside the bearing capacity analysis and bearing capacity analysis comprises a very important part for assessment of safety of the units in the offshore so these are some of the shapes which uh, I have copied from SNAM. SNAM is the International Guideline uh, from Society of Naval Architects and Marine Engineers. And we can see different shapes of foundations of uh, Jack Aprik can exist like this. And normally the common shape is like this or this. Uh, this is the tip of the spud gun. And uh, this is the height from the tip to the uh, area where the maximum uh, cross section, horizontal cross section of the foundation can be seen. And uh, this is the equivalent diameter. Actually, the uh, shape of the spud can is not perfectly circular in most of the cases. However, during the analysis of bearing capacity, it is uh, considered as equivalent circle uh, depending on the uh, cross-sectional area of the foundation. And uh, this is called spy gut. So there is a pointed tip, uh, very rigid kind of steel construction. And these are the parts of the leg which are connected to the foundation now this is a real picture from one of our fields where uh, the we have drawn a schematic here uh, these are the soil kind of soil condition it is encountered in many parts of the option of course in indian offshore there are different kinds of soil in different parts like in western offshore we get in mumbai high very complex type of soils with multi-layer and there are cementation of uh, sand at the surface in many places, like in this case, this is from Mumbai High. And then there may be silt or clay layers, which are of uh, soft uh, strength. And uh, in this particular case, case there was actually an a punch too occurred uh, fairly early in the 90s, uh, 80s or 90s. Yeah. So this is the foundation spot can, which is connected to the uh, jacket leg, which is of steel construction. Now, bearing capacity, as we all know, as geotechnical engineers, uh, this is the 
maximum load that the foundation can bear and if we calculate the ultimate bearing capacity in true sense this is the maximum total vertical load at the base of foundation which can be put before failure of the uh, soil and the foundation and uh, it relates to the shear resistance of soil then there are many other aspects like loading rate so as we all know in case of clay or sand if the loading rate is varied the shear resistance also uh, becomes different so that's why bearing capacity or soil properties are not constant normally it depends on the situation then type of loading static dynamic or cyclic then depth of the foundation shape eccentricity slope of the seabed load inclination etc also uh, has uh, its influence on the bearing capacity that can be available at a site with a specific type of foundation then soil stratigraphy that is also very important because in such big foundations like spot can normally what happens uh, properties of uh, two three layers of soil are normally uh, required to be accounted for to calculate the bearing capacity applicable at a particular depth of penetration for this spot can and as we know that uh, in case of sand we consider drained bearing capacity in the slow kind of loading and in case of clay it is considered as undrained in case of silt it may be drained or untrained depending on the outer bulk limits the grain size shear strength uh, characteristic and accordingly it is classified but codes of uh, uh, assessment of bearing capacity for uh, spot cans recommend that in case of silt both drained and undrained analysis of bearing capacity should be carried out to find out any susceptibility of foundation failure one of the important difference between the onshore foundation and the foundation of uh, this kind of uh, structures is that in case of onshore foundation we prepare the ground and then place the foundation but in case of offshore the, like the jaca prig uh, it penetrates the foundation penetrates the ground we increase the load and it goes down below the sea floor we increase the load and then it again goes down and uh, that is the thing that, so it fails the soil actually and goes down and when the load is equal to the bearing capacity at a particular level it stops at that level and that is the final penetration now we are coming to the preloading of jackups and spot can penetration so why it is required so on the right uh, figure we can see the stages of loading of a jackup spot can when the hull is raised from the floating condition for a jackup rig the reactions will go to the legs and the load on the foundation will increase definitely and then it penetrates below the sea floor and uh, uh, but when the storm load uh, is applied on the jackup the load will be much more so during operation that condition may be faced that's why the foundation is checked with much higher load Uh, to simulate the storm condition and that is the purpose of preloading that is the purpose of preloading so there is a margin of safety which needs to be maintained during the installation of the jackup and this diagram shows like that so the preload is selected in such a way that there is a margin of safety and the load applied during the initial installation is somewhat more than what the jackup is likely to face during its operation So the design environmental uh, loading. Uh, but one thing I would like to say that the preload cannot perfectly simulate the condition which it may face uh, with design environmental loading, because in preload we have very little component of uh, horizontal loading or moment on the foundation. As we know, the moment and horizontal load, that is the load inclination, uh, impacts the bearing capacity, and uh, this preload. only uh, applies the particle load but there are guidelines where we can put the load and resistance factors and then if we complete the preload as required then the foundation is considered as safe for operation now during, regarding the soil condition and bearing capacity these are the codes of practice which we follow one is iso 19905 one that's one and 2012 it was the released and the snem latest uh, update is 2008 uh, to my knowledge and uh, there are, there may be different soil, uh, soil conditions in the site for which the bearing capacity may be required to be calculated sometimes it is completely sand suppose we get 20 meters sand below the sea floor then it can be considered as single layer soil for the bearing capacity of even large uh, diameter spot cans 
because the stress zone uh, will not uh, be influenced by soil below 20 meter in that case and a similar thing in case of clay also and but sometimes there are multiple layers like sand over clay clay over sand weak clay over strong clay then strong clay over weak clay for all these conditions the bearing capacity needs to be assessed so the codes these two codes have given clear guidelines how to assess the bearing capacity in such different conditions of soil so it is actually basically derived from onshore foundation analysis with modifications uh, for jacob rigs uh, because of the large kind of foundation because of the shape of the foundation and offshore conditions of loading now this has been copied from us name uh, it shows how the shear failure modes can vary in spite of different layering of soil and this is a single layer soil where general bearing capacity failure has been shown here and uh, this is also general uh, bearing capacity in, in spite of layered soil because the difference of strengths of the two layers or three layers are not much so it can happen in this way but when uh, the difference of strengths between suppose two layers are much uh, in contrast then the mode of failure will be different here we have shown that uh, this is a squeezing kind of failure where this is the foundation and this is a soft layer uh, which is overlying a hard layer of soil where the mode of failure will be like that the soft soil will squeeze out from this layer and in that case the bearing capacity of this uh, position will be higher uh, in squeezing mode than what we can get by analyzing the bearing capacity only considering the soft layer so because of this presence of the strong layer below this soft layer the bearing capacity by squeezing mode will be higher however it is limited by the bearing capacity of the lower layer in this case then uh, there may be situations where there is a hard layer overlying a soft layer in that case as we increase the load on the foundation there may be sudden failure that sudden failure may be very dangerous and uh, that is the very important things considered in case of any sites where it is expected uh, it is carefully considered uh, and uh, if the safety is sufficient then only the jacob rig is cleared for deployment in those sites so there are many research uh, have been carried out recently also going on especially in the anus singapore and then uwa university of western australia uh, they have carried out uh, excellent research in uh, using centrifuge model test and large deformation finite element analysis to consider all these aspects and now uh, there is a tendency to uh, shift from wish in place uh, kind of analysis uh, conventional analysis to mechanism based analysis however the codes are yet to incorporate all the new findings because lot of field uh, experience is required and uh, validation is required on actual field condition then only uh, we should be confident to apply the new methods so far the wish in place that means as if the foundation is really in this position the disturbance of the soil the failure modes the mechanisms of failure these are not perfectly considered uh, by the formula which we use, use uh, currently uh, using the codes and in case of sand overlying clay there are two basic methods one is the thanna meyer of uh, guideline um, where the shear strength of the uh, this uh, soil which will be below the foundation above this uh, soft layer is also considered and then it is modified according to the jacob kind of foundation and there is also a practically derived by fogro actually young et al so this is a projected area where the load is uh, considered to be projected to the bottom layer for calculation of pans to capacity and these are the ratios that means uh, uh, three vertical one horizontal to five vertical uh, is to one horizontal that kind of loss spread should be considered as per the snm guidelines and then safety should be evaluated in case of strong layer overlying uh, clay it is the brown meyerhof formula which is a little bit modified by snm or iso and that is applied in the offshore now there may be other modes of failure like uh, this uh, in this case there is a hard layer and there is a soft layer but even then that pans through with conventional bearing capacity may be applicable in this case 
points to plus squeezing that is shown. So depending on the uh, depth of the foundation and the relative strength and layer thickness of the different layers below the foundation, the modes of failure may be different. But there are clear guidelines how to derive all this bearing capacity in multi-layered soil. So I have not copied all the formula here because this can be anywhere referred uh, to the codes like SNAME and ISO. But uh, for single layer clay, so this is the formulation given by SNAME. And uh, for sand, this is the formulation. And with this, uh, the shape factor or depth factor, everything is defined and which needs to be calculated. Then there is another uh, thing that uh, to be needs to be considered in case of bearing capacity analysis for spot cans. That is the volume of the spot can. So the volume of the foundation itself is a big thing because uh, volume may be 300 cubic meter or 400-500 mm cubic meter. So that's big uh, volume actually. So this is filled with water when the spot can is placed in the soil. It is it penetrates. So the inside of the spot can will be with water. So there will be a component of uh, force, upward force actually, when we uh, the spot can penetrate the soil. So that is accounted for in this case. And secondly, uh, how the cavity will be dealt. The cavity, cavity means when the spot can suppose penetrates, initially there will be uh, no soil on the top of the spot can. But as it enters uh, much below the ground, there will be a collapse of the hole above the foundation. And then that uh, soil needs to be deal, dealt with. And the ISO specifically gives a very good formulation based on uh, works in University of Western Australia part. So that is uh, currently used to calculate whether the cavity depth will be, how much the cavity depth, uh, depending on the soil condition and this part can the specification. So that is ultimately taken into account in the calculation. Here we have mentioned another thing that because the, suppose in a single layer of clay we, where the strength is varying uh, below the foundation, how to account for the shear strength? So the code currently guides that uh, the averaging of the undrained shear strength should be carried out up to 50% uh, of diameter of the foundation below the uh, maximum level of the, maximum uh, width of the foundation. So that is done. But there are other findings uh, from practical experience, like Fuguro has uh, reported through their OTC paper that in certain cases, this B by 2 may be high and it may be less actually. That was uh, 0.3B or 0.25B. That also is found to be practically applicable. Another important thing is that why these things vary, the uh, soil parameters uh, which we report in the soil investigation reports for any analysis of bearing capacity, those parameters matter a lot actually. And uh, this uh, validation of many formulas depend on the quality of the parameters. Uh, this is uh, a comparison of bearing capacity, how it varies in case of sand and in case of clay. And if the uh, strength gradient of the clay uh, increases or decreases, how the penetration of the leg will vary. So this is, uh, uh, this uh, figure shows uh, that kind of thing. So uh, we can note that in case of sand, the bearing capacity is uh, high and as it penetrates, it becomes, it increases very rapidly. So in case of sand, the penetration of leg of jackup is limited, say up to uh, one meter or two meter maximum, that kind of penetration is seen. Uh, but in case of clay, it may be very high. And uh, in when you see uh, the offshore fields in India, the penetration have even exceeded 30 meter in a few cases below the sea flow in case of soft clay. Uh, generally, typically, if somebody asks what is the average kind of penetration, I would say that it is about five to 10 meters in most of the Western offshore fields. Uh, Eastern offshore, it may be high because in Eastern offshore in the fields, we normally get very soft soil below the sea floor with uh, less uh, gradient of uh, increase of strength with depth. Now, how to do the multi-layered bearing capacity analysis in layered soils? Because uh, the in onshore codes, we do not find a very clear guideline on this kind of analysis. So the offshore code gives the guideline. That is, uh, in case, suppose there are three, clear, uh, three layers with different strengths or different characteristics, then we have to start the bearing capacity from here. The bottom most layer, we do the bearing capacity analysis. 
it is a singular analysis so it is simple then we have to account for these two layers one and two and based on the condition suppose this is a stronger layer and this is a weaker layer then pass through analysis has to be carried out and now we will get another bn capacity for this level and based on that bn capacity the third layer is again evaluated when the spot can will be in this layer so that way we carry out the bn capacity from bottom to top actually in case of spot can bn capacity analysis so both the codes name and iso gives uh, these guidelines in case of layered soil profile either it will be general, general bn capacity if the depth below the foundation is significantly large to assume that it is a general bn capacity failure and if it is not then either it will be squeezing uh, capacity or pass through capacity which needs to be analyzed in case of multi layered soil now this is a practical leg penetration graph and it has been derived uh, on the basis of uh, the software which myself developed uh, for jacob leg penetration analysis and we can carry out layered soil profile bearing capacity using that software and we can see how the layers vary in this case these are the depths and these are the soil types with strength it is given so we finally got this the bearing capacity and uh, this is the maximum preload this line shows the maximum preload of the jacob so it is 45 mega newton so approximately 4500 ton so this kind of load its leg will be subjected to so it will ultimately go to the foundation and uh, in this case the spot can will stop at about 17.5 meter and it is considered as safe because this capacity is uh, having a good factor of safety against any failure this is another practical case uh, which we have analyzed for our offshore and uh, we can see that there may be uh, because there are different methods like i described how the load spread is to be considered say 3 is to 1 to 5 is to 1 or hanna mayer hof uh, formula mayer hof formula is to be uh, used for the pass through kind of analysis so in this case if we calculate the bearing capacity applying the lower bound and upper bound things in soil parameters as well as the formulations of the guides uh, then we get uh, different capacities for this particular depth and what we see that out of the three legs really two legs had 7 meter penetration in this case and the third leg it it penetrated more actually by 2 meter and if that penetration is sudden then it is also a very uh, scary kind of thing because it is such a big unit in the offshore and if sudden penetration takes place by even 2 meter it can be damaging to the legs in this case nothing happens of happen of course it happened during preloading so these are the size of the foundation it is diameter is equivalent diameter 15.3 meter then height of the spot can 5.8 and volume in this case for the spot can was 533.8 cubic meter and maximum preload was 70 mega newton in this particular case uh this is another case which i have presented in igc conference uh, held in uh, iit madras so this was the real pass through from eastern offshore i have just copied it here so in this case what we got actually there are uh, mainly soft clay soft to firm clay in the sea floor near the sea floor and uh, but there are certain layers thin layers of uh, drain kind of soil like silt sand or sand silt so in those kind of soil the bearing capacity analysis becomes very complicated and that's why we require a feel in geotechnical engineering not only that means formula helps it a lot of feeling about the soil parameters are required and then different situations should be considered so this case did not come to us actually because it was cleared by the marine water surveyor and uh, when the pass through happened it was an exploratory location so we initially did not look into this case it was not consulted we were not consulted after the pass through we were asked to look into this case find out how it happened and how it happened so post uh, failure analysis was carried out and we found that uh, how the soil parameter even uh, from the report which was used for bearing capacity analysis at that time 
from the preliminary report that was sufficient actually if we had applied the codel provisions in calculating the depth twice bearing capacity this was very clear that the pans2 was eminent here and it happened actually in the field from 8.7 meter to 24 meter so these are the experience actually that's why different profiles and different uh, formulations should be used in case of doubtful cases and see the range of penetration or the possibility of pans2 to avoid such kind of incidents in offshore luckily there was not much damage or injury in this case but there are many cases which will show later on that there are catastrophic cases actually with lot of damage and which should be prevented and geo technical engineer has a role here to do the analysis uh, of soil to define the parameters correctly and do the analysis as per the guidelines latest international guidelines now assessment of spatkan foundation actually has different levels what we are talking today mainly is the leg penetration analysis so this is only vertical load bearing capacity analysis without concern the horizontal load or moment on the foundation but uh, if we have to assess the foundation practically that is the first step actually uh, the preload check so here we have defined this as per its name or iso also similar exactly similar factors may be a little bit different but the policies or principles are similar so the first thing is the preload check whether the uh, rig can be preloaded in this location uh, to make it safe with the soil condition with respect to soil condition so along with that the sliding check of the uh, windward leg is carried out in the first step and the resistance factor for soil in the first step of analysis is carried out like this for sand or drain condition 0.8 is the factor to be used for uh, considering resistance of soil in case of clay 0.64 is recommended to be used then if this check passes the foundation to be safe at a particular site then it's all right there is no requirement to carry out further checks if it is not safe then we have to go to the higher level check where in the second step the foundation is considered as pin foundation that means there will be no moment or fixity at the bottom of the foundation and uh, the uh, vh diagrams are constructed that means vertical horizontal capacity envelopes and based on that the foundation is checked whether it is passing with the load and resistance factors recommended by the codes so in this particular check in case of lateral the sliding capacity these are the partial uh, resistance factors to be used with the soil now if this also does not pass the unit to be safe considered safe at a particular site then higher level analysis the third level is analysis is carried out where everything is considered in this case also there are two actually one is pinned foundation condition and another that is to be is with fixity of the foundation where the moment is also considered so so it goes to the further level here from pinned to fixed and then with fixity definitely partial fixity only it is not fully fixed and uh, this placement check is the third level higher level analysis uh, considered if these two checks uh, does not pass the unit now this is uh, one analysis get out uh, to see the that means to show only the safety check how it is done in case of pin foundation so this is the phase diagram in case of a sand profile if the soil is sand near the sea floor the foundation can be assessed with respect to vh diagram so as we increase the horizontal load on the foundation so the vertical bearing capacity decreases and decreases and this is the uh, failure uh, with sliding so this is the net uh, ultimate uh, failure envelope and then the resistance factors if we apply to the soil the stability zone can be defined inside this total envelope so the loading Uh, the environmental loading should be within this uh, safe zone then it is safe so this is the way the second level check with pin foundation can be done similar thing can be done with uh, 2b also fixed uh, with fixity of foundation considered in the analysis in this case that is fixity is not considered so we can see that in during actual environment the horizontal load also uh, has a low role here so 
this kind of uh, analysis is required as a next level if the initial uh, payload check uh, does not pass uh, you need for deployment at the offshore site uh, i'll go to the next slide uh, this is the uh, interaction of spot can when there is uh, soft soil nearby so in many cases what we face uh, there is footprints from previous deployments at a particular offshore site and when it penetrates previously the soil is disturbed suppose the spot can diameter is 14 meter we get normally a disturbance zone of 2 to 2.5 uh, diameters uh, covering that uh, extent uh, the soil is totally disturbed and then we if we install a uh, spot can nearby in virgin soil then there is interaction which is called spot can footprint interaction and in one of the cases recently we had to see how much distance is to be maintained from the previously disturbed zone it was in fact a large area where the soil was very very soft and disturbed and we finally found that one diameter clear distance from the edge of this disturbed zone with the edge of the foundation needs to be maintained to be very assured that it will not be having any effect if the distance is reduced with with respect to the disturbed zone then the there is a tendency that the foundation will slide towards this uh, soft soil and in that case if sliding takes place it happened in many offshore sites in the offshore worldwide in that case there is a chance of uh, severe leg damage because the bending moment and stresses increases in the legs and legs are likely to be damaged if the uh, sliding happens and cords are stressed or the structures of the jacob legs are stressed very much beyond the allowable limit now i personally also participated in one of the very important prediction event which was globally invited by issmg before the isfog conference held in norway ngi in 2015 there were four cases where the predictions from professionals or experts or uh, persons working in this area were invited and uh, two cases were from gulf of mexico soil and two cases from north sea so this is one of the cases which we can see is very interesting because there is a very large kind of uh, foundation uh, and it's uh, preload if we see preload we can see each leg had uh, maximum preload of 156 approximately mega newton so this is tremendously <laughs> heavy preload which needs to be applied for this jackup it was placed in gulf of mexico and uh, it is very interesting to see that uh, the predictions done by the participants were not correct in this case it varied a lot including my prediction was also not correct uh, if we apply the snaim and iaso formula for prediction uh, it does not match exactly so what happened it was described later on when the case was disclosed the real results so depending on the shape of the foundation the inclination that means the angle of the foundation at the bottom of spot can Hulse, Hulseby and Martin had uh, given uh, then comes the factors, and if those factors are used in this case, with some reduction uh, given by Menzies and Roper in 2008, then it matches. So it was seen afterwards. So these are the things which that means one formula may not work uh, all in all the cases. Of course, in this case, uh, there was a discrep uh, discrepancy in the soil data. That is, uh, both soil data were not available. Like. in situ testing and laboratory testing both were not available both sets only one set was available if we get both sets of data it helps actually it becomes more reliable the soil parameters we get inputs from uh, both in situ testing and laboratory testing then it gives more confidence to find out the parameters now these are the situations what can happen actually if it goes wrong and the offshore geotechnical role is so important when this kind of incidents happen then only uh, it is realized how important this subject is actually and how complex it is to do the things correctly following all the codes find out the parameters and this is one rig which is deployed in offshore so it is standing with stable ground without any problem in this case this was a case from 2002 the arabdel 19 rig it uh, capsized actually ultimately and uh, this is uh, mars victory in 1996 offshore australia this was in gulf actually gulf of the uh, arabian gulf and this was in offshore australia which had the pans to and you can see the leg damage happened here and in severe cases legs are actually cut and the hull with the unit is towed away and then it is modified 
now since time is already around 45 minutes we will go to the next phase of the presentation that is on bottom stability of offshore jacket structures so for all the fixed platforms in the offshore in shallow water because indian offshore where these jackets are installed are limited to currently 90 meters approximately from the <coughs> water depth is uh, maximum 90 meters where the jackets are installed in our indian offshore on the western 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 indian offshore and uh, these are still structures uh, finally these are supported permanently by piles which are steel piles tubular open ended driven but before the piles can carry the loads of the structure the jacket has to be installed on the sea floor supported by temporary type of foundation that is called mud mat so here comes the role of our geotechnical engineers to examine uh, beforehand before installation whether the size of the mud mat what kind of size what kind of shape where it is to be placed and uh, depending on the soil condition whether the stability is ensured and that must be ensured to safe install for safe installation of the jacket i would say that uh, there are various phases of loading actually because piles are very long say in mumbai high is about 80 meter water depth the total length of one pile if it is installed through the main legs may be exceeding 200 meters so in one segment we cannot place this pile so it is placed in uh, different three four segments so during those phases and secondly all the legs have piles in this case so there will be different phases like here two segments of pile here one segment of pile or only one segment of pile somewhere and then there will be loading directions like we consider eight loading directions environmental conditions from north side then northwest then west that way so eight directions are generally considered and we see with the uh, associated current wave and wind whether the uh, foundation will be stable with respect to the designed uh, shape and size and mud mats are normally uh, designed to sit on the sea floor and sometimes rarely it is uh, designed to penetrate below the sea floor i'll come to one slide where we have shown one anomaly in the offshore indian offshore <coughs> so apart from uh, bearing capacity and uh, overturning and sliding stability uh, the structural safety of these members are also checked by structural uh, engineers now what are the effect of safety required the for vertical bearing capacity that is uh, 1.5 and 2.0 are recommended by api rp20 which is the current code which are followed by us also and uh, it with an addendum in 2014 so 1.5 is where the environmental loading has been considered and it is 2.0 where the environmental loading is not considered only gravity loading is uh, considered and in case of sliding stability the effect of safety recommended is 1.5 for overturning stability it is 1.5 again so if this factor of safety are uh, obtained in the design it is considered safe So this is a real picture of uh, mud mat being fabricated during fabrication of the jacket structure, and uh, here the soil was sand on the sea floor. So in sand, as we know, the bearing capacity is uh, relatively higher than if we have clay, because the width of the foundation increases the bearing capacity in case of uh, sand, but it does not increase that way in case of clay. Secondly, if there is a little penetration in sand, the bearing capacity again increases rapidly. So in sand we get higher bearing capacity and uh, lesser size of mud mat. So these four mud mats at four corners of the jacket was sufficient in this case. It is installed successfully without any problem. So this is also another jacket, uh, jacket uh, bottom foundation, mud mat foundation, uh, which was used for a process platform. It was a big process platform. So we can see how it was meticulously designed by the designer. Uh, it has been that shapes and locations and relative sizes are that means designed in such a way that it is optimally designed to use minimum foundation material and fabrication cost is optimized it was successfully installed now what kind of formula we use in offshore <coughs> for bearing capacity analysis so in case of clay this is the formulation recommended by apirp2 ju uh, before 2011 it was not Uh, 
I think Mr. Mahanta, we have lost your uh, loss. Hear you. Rate of increase of one range just trying to be depth. So if uh, that that rate is different, the bearing capacity is different. For a constant kind of shear strength, this will be absent. So it will be very simple. Now the shape factors. It is interesting to see that uh, we see normally the we see that uh, the shape factor is uh, at least one point two, but uh, current code gives as one point one eight <coughs> maximum shape factor. So it will be reducing if this this uh, figure uh, is increases, then the shape factor is again reduced actually. For increasing strength profile, the shape factor gradually reduces. So, if we use all these formulations, we come up with the bearing capacity and the eccentricity of the load is also to be considered as we use b minus twice uh, e, l minus twice e that is used for calculating the effective width and length of the foundation. There are many issues, in fact, which we cannot cover in limited time. Uh, however, I will cover some important issues here. So this is initially it is given. It is given by us uh, depending on the soil condition near the sea floor. We give for purely centric and vertical loading the bearing capacity uh, for different shapes. Three different shapes we give based on this preliminary analysis can be carried out, and the initial uh, first round of shape can be uh, designed. And then as the analysis goes on, we get the moment and lateral load on the foundation on various. Uh, phases of installation and with various loading directions, then the foundation bearing capacity has to be calculated uh, depending on the real loading uh, of that particular load case. So, this is recommended by the APARP 2 geo to examine based on the pH diagram. That is, it is similar to that what we saw in the uh, Jacob Foundation also. So, in this case also, that horizontal and vertical load if considered how the shape of the uh, failure envelope will be there. So it is the sand and it is the clay. So in case of sand, it is similar to spot gun foundation. So ultimately, this is the safe area. There will be safe zone, uh, bearing capacity zone, in which all the loading conditions should lie. And in case of clay, it is like this. So if we increase the horizontal load, it will the vertical load bearing capacity will be reducing. And at certain point of time, if we increase the horizontal load beyond that limit, it will be failing by sliding. So ultimately, we can uh, derive the safe zone here also by applying the factors of safety recommended by the codes. I have given two examples which can be verified also. This is the result of my software Matcap, which was uh, developed. And this is used for our WNGC works whenever required. So this is the way we can verify actually whether the load uh, uh, applied on the foundation is in the safe zone. I would show one example where the uh, it is the actual case actually. So this uh, loading for the gravity condition was not in safe zone, although it was uh, not very unsafe, but it was not within safe zone. Factor safety was not sufficient here to the design foundation. And if we see the this thing, uh, this is environmental condition. So in case of environmental condition, it was much that is it is beyond this. Um, so it was beyond the safe capacity. So it was very, very uh, wrongly designed actually to say that. And it was a big mud mat, 29 meter by 30 meter size in soft clay. Now in this particular case, uh, also we carried out 3D finite element to verify whether the loading condition was okay with the soil condition and the mud mat size. So we found that it was not sufficient actually. So there was a tendency to uh, increase the settlement on this corner and it really happened and the foundation actually was uh, failing. Now in this particular analysis, uh, we carried out first validated the model of uh, plexus was used here, three defined element. And we before we applying the all the different load conditions, we verified the uh, pure centric bearing capacity and interestingly it was so matching that we got from aprp 2 g 29,006, uh, 29.6 actually, uh, sorry, and this is 30, 30 meganewton. So this, uh, sorry, 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 yeah, 
uh, 29,692 we got uh, from BM chemistry analysis using the APRP 2G and it was 30,000 kN by Plexis. So it was quite matching. And then that refinement of mass was used for uh, imposing the other lateral and uh, moment load. And uh, the case was simulated like that. So these are the BN chemistry formula for given for uh, sand. It is like conventional onshore BN chemistry formula only with uh, the factors, uh, BN chemistry factors. and these are used so in the case of uh, simple strip footing it becomes even simplified and in case of circular and square footing it, it becomes simplified so this is one of the cases uh, which we dealt in the offshore so we can see how complicated it can be actually it is very interesting that there is an existing platform here jacket platform and then there is a jacket rig installed here as a mopu mopu means uh, mobile offshore production unit so that jacket was used as production unit not for drilling for production purpose and then another platform was to be installed here so the problem was that uh, there was a jacket rig deployed here nearby so there was footprints of the jacket where the soil got disturbed already and this was a virgin kind of soil so there was a contrast laterally of the soil properties so that would affect the mud bed bearing capacity so this needs to be verified that means what is the distance we can go that will shift from this disturbed zone of soil so this was analyzed uh, at that time we did not have 3d software we did it with 2d analysis and then this was also verified by very highly reputed consultant abroad and finally we carried out the required shifting of the position of the structure so that it could be installed safely and it was in fact installed without any problem but there was limitations because we had on one side this jacket rig on another side it was uh, the existing platform which cannot be shifted at all and only that means uh, this could be a little bit shifted so it was like this and i would show this uh, pug marks at that time we did the seabed survey to find out what is the zone of the disturbance and the pug marks from the previous uh, deployment of jacket rig uh, this is the position where the jack, uh, jacket was to be installed and this is the position of the rig which we saw uh, we have shown here it, this is the rig rig position jacket rig and this is the position and uh, existing platform is like this so it was this uh, position where the new jacket structure was to be installed so these are very interesting cases which needs a lot of insight to take decisions so that everything is safe in the offshore so it was done by me only at that time by using the 2d software plexis by modeling it in a simplified manner because the mud mat was very large size around 40 meter size uh, 39 by 39 yeah so it was uh, approximately analyzed in initially Uh, these are the failure zones one interesting thing is that this is a soft layer, soft layer actually around 10 meter after that there is a sand layer which is of higher strength so the failure zone was limited to the soft layer only in this case in spite of being uh, in spite of the uh, footprint and uh, you see so the size of the mud mat being very large but the failure zone was limited to the soft layer only this is a very interesting aspect and uh, another case uh, anomaly in design and which these cases come to us actually post uh, construction when the claims or other things disputes happen so these are these are brought to us for review and analysis and our recommendations normally in design we do not have a role but in case of any problems we are referred and post installation issues we are referred to that means technically analyze for our company all these cases and this was one of the case where the designer actually design the mud mat because you can see this is a very soft layer this is also soft clay only and after that very stiff clay was there it was in the western option then uh, what the designer did actually to save the size of the foundation so that otherwise if we install it that is design it for the uh, soft clay layer uh, the size would be very large and if it is it can be penetrated to this level because the bearing capacity will be very high so size could be minimized so it was similar case for around three platforms of this kind with variations of the thickness of soft layer so in this particular class case the it was designed that the penetration of the mud mat will be up to 2.9 meter and then it was size was designed but after installation what was the result the result was that the actual depth of penetration was limited to 0.46 meter only we can see how it was designed for 2.9 meter but it rested on 0.46 then it was the part of us because we give the soil reports and we have to defend our case 
and we calculate that post installation with all the loads for the design and we found that maximum the penetration was 0.8 meter that can happen in this particular soil so this was within the limitation of when this is big criteria so we had no problem in defending our case and it was ultimately accepted by the designer that it was a mistake in design that uh, the penetration was not calculated actually it was assumed that because it is soft soil it will be penetrating easily up to this depth and since the soil is very strong here the factor of safety against uh, foundation failure was sufficient yes if the foundation could be installed at this depth it was safe but the penetration was not analyzed whether it will be practically taking place up to this depth so that was the uh, mistake in design and uh, finally there was costly modification in the platform because if the level because suppose the level above the sea surface is say 9 meter so it was uh, 10 meter or 10.5 or 11 meter so everything had to be modified to bring it to the acceptable level so that kind of costly repair was required in this particular case so we should we need to be very careful in uh, designing all these things now uh, since the time is almost over so we are coming to the conclusion that uh, in case of analysis of bearing capacity of jacob foundation there are many important aspects uh, i would like to say that uh, since it is a large sized foundation so the effect uh, like the drain and drain uh, one thing i have forgot to say that in drain and drain kind of analysis so for a small foundation in a particular soil for a small foundation if it is drained shearing in case of very big foundation in the same soil it may not be fully drained actually it may be partially drained because the part of uh, the pore pressure dissipation will be much longer here so this is uh, uh, so it goes into under kind of thing so these are the effects of large diameter foundation secondly it encompasses large volume of soil <coughs> below the foundation and on the sides of the foundation also so that's why we have to carefully evaluate the soil condition for spot can bearing capacity evaluation that is the primary uh, requirement uh, if we use the correct formula and correct calculation that may not be sufficient if the parameters are wrong then aspect of backfill and shape of foundation that is also important like i have mentioned in one of the issmg uh, prediction event that uh, hausby and martin um, bearing capacity factors were applicable which is gives a lower bound bearing capacity in that in that particular case so and uh, in current design uh, current uh, bearing capacity analysis is based on wish in place uh, concept model of the bearing capacity analysis which is not very perfect so mechanism based approach is being tried and the formulations have already been derived however it is not coming to code immediately but in future it is expected that the formulations may change according to the uh, actual mechanism of failure based on centrifuge model test last deformation finite element these are being found out in case of mudman stability the it is very critical to successful installation of offshore structures we have seen uh, failure of foundation in the offshore which is very very dangerous and uh, it is very very costly actually so in offshore everything is very costly and uh, it needs careful consideration and correct uh, assessment of load as well as bearing capacity of the soil and foundation so three modes of failure are basically investigated that is bearing sliding and overturning if we follow the right procedure of the latest international code we have seen that everything becomes safe so that is what is the primary requirement and uh, foundation with irregular geometrical shapes that is also a challenging thing because uh, what we study in uh, our engineering colleges or practically also mostly that shapes are regular kind of shape and it is fully with uh, foundation material but in offshore design there may be Uh, irregular shaped and there may be blank portions inside the foundation uh, for which the bearing capacity analysis may become very complex at times and it should be carefully done and proper assessment of soil properties and adherence to latest international code that is very very important in the case which we shown here uh, it was not found to be complying with the code actually in this particular case so this case had that conclusion from our side so that is very important uh, compliance with the latest international code that should be the uh, right thing to do and uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity and uh, i have presented briefly two aspects one is jacob foundation and other is jacket foundation during installation so in case of any discussion or questions uh, you are all welcome yeah 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Manta. Yeah. You know, for a very okay. practical, practical and insight uh, observation of your, you know, your ge geotechnical work. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'd like to take the privilege of asking the first question, if you don't mind. I think there are there yes. a couple of questions, but I just want to ask you, you know, you uh, regarding yeah. the comparison you made about the API result and Plaxis 3D result. Yeah. Uh, you you found excellent matching. I'm just curious, what how, how did you yeah. obtain the geotechnical parameters for your plexus? Yeah. The, so the this was the yeah yeah this was the Morcolum model where uh, limited parameters are only required. So strength parameter was the main parameter to assess the strength of the soil in this case during capacity. So it was based on CPT as well as uh, in situ test and uh, in situ test CPT which was carried out based on the processing of the CPD, as well as laboratory test, which was conducted in the laboratory spot onshore and offshore. And then this, this was actually, this was a post-installation case. So we did not change any parameter. Whatever parameter was given in this oil report, that exactly has been used in this analysis. So I was also surprised. But one thing I would say, that we have to refine the mess to the extent that we get the actual bearing capacity. And we can note that in the APARP2 geo currently in practice, the bearing capacity has been reduced from the earlier API, and this may be the reason that it, it, it complies with the results of the finite element with a very narrow range. That means, say, 10% variation may be there, but not much. So that would, that I would like to say. So there is no change in parameter. Parameter was exactly as in design. So we applied in the plexus with the right shape of the foundation. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, um, sure. Rupam ji, Namaskar, can I ask a question? Namaskar, Namaskar. Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Uh, very, I mean, very, not long questions, short questions I'll ask you. Uh, sure. What is the, what is the peculiar name Spudcan? How did the name come? Peculiar name Spudcan, number two. Yeah. Uh, legs actually, you know, they can corrode, right? So the life, uh, then how, what is the life of the structure? Number three, when, how do you differentiate, monitor the differential settlement of the legs, Rupam ji? Yeah. And uh, uh, slide 21, I could not follow. If you can take some time, can I explain? Last question is, you have used yeah. some software on your own. Can yes. you kindly tell me which software you use? Thank you, Rupamji. Yes, yes, sure, sure. Firstly, this Patkan, I also do not know how this name came, actually, because of the shape, probably, and it's void inside. The foundation is inside, only water is there. It is filled with water. So I do not know the real history of this name, but it is called Spatkan. So all the foundations of independent legs like Jacob is uh, this, this thing. Secondly, you asked about the differential settlement in the legs. So one of the advantages of independent leg or Spatkan supported Jacob rig is that all the legs can have different penetrations because there are jacking systems. We can adjust the level to the required level and uh, there are instruments and monitoring from the rig floor uh, where the preloading is controlled or during operation also, a lot of people are there and there are people who controls these things. So this can be carried out without any problem. So this can be measured from the floor of the drilling rig and leveling is carried out uh, to bring it to the acceptable level so that the legs are not stressed. Secondly, uh, th thirdly, you asked about the corrosion also. So these are regularly checked up actually. So before the rigs are deployed, like there are another thing I have not spoken, that is the jetting system also in the spot can. That means when we extract the foundation from suppose a deep layer of clay, so there's a lot of suction force uh, below the foundation. So from my experience, I would say there is one case where we had a lot of problem in extracting the foundation, uh, probably because the jetting system was not working. So big, to break that suction actually, the jetting system is applied. So high pressure water is jetted below the foundation during extraction in case of very deep layer of clay and then that suction is broken actually and then resistance for retrieval becomes less and it is successfully retrieved. So these are the things. Secondly, you asked about, uh, lastly, you asked about the software that I have developed myself, the code in C++. One software that is Mahajak, which is currently used by us for leg penetration analysis. And that uh, takes into account all the formulations of uh, SNAM as well as ISO. So we have kept a lot of flexibility in the software to adjust with the change in code. So that would, I would like to say. Yeah. Which language you use to develop that software? Pardon? 
which language you used to develop the yeah. software i did it in c++ yeah slide 20 slide 20 yes i will show that Yeah, this one. Is it? Kindly explain. Yeah, yeah. This is a VH diagram actually. Suppose your spot can is at a particular depth. Say this was a sand profile actually. So suppose it is 0.5 meter penetration. So we shall get the vertical bearing capacity. If there is no horizontal load, it will be purely centric vertical load. And then if we apply the horizontal load gradually, so we will get we will get reduction in the bearing capacity. so if we plot this we will get this uh, ultimate uh, failure envelope and then uh, the sliding capacity can be calculated because if we apply the gradually increasing horizontal load on the foundation we can calculate this uh, sliding capacity so based on this combination the net ultimate uh, failure envelope can be uh, this can be drawn and then if we apply the resistance factors uh, for the soil we can again get a reduced uh, failure envelope that is the safe uh zone uh, in which the loading should be existing for safety of the foundation am i clear thank you yeah yeah so this is a little bit complicated even i have developed uh, some that means component of the software to <laughs> calculate this so if required we can do it actually but it is not normally required it re it is required in complicated cases when there is a doubt or further checks needs to be done but it is anyway very important and is a practical thing actually because it happens really it is not that only purely vertical load will be there it is always the horizontal load because we uh, consider 50 years uh, return period of storm in calculating the loading on the jack yeah. okay. sorry yeah any other question what is the average life of a jacka platform uh i would not say, be able to say the that means period of but jackups of 80s are working nicely without much problem but modern jackups have a lot of other facilities in in in, in case of monitoring or jacking system or in case of deployability in water depth like uh, now the jackups are available where the jackup can be deployed in 150 meters even water depth and very soft soil for very large kind of penetration and the jacking capacity is much more than uh, previous jackups so but jackups of 80s are working in our fields without problem yeah uh, 70s also some thank you yeah welcome there is uh, i think there are two two questions you you, yeah. you need to take them up or i think you yes, can yes. see them on your screen uh, uh if you read it it will be nice for me okay yeah. i think yeah. the first question is uh, arpit parekh okay uh, arpit will come uh, uh, you know i think he, uh, even i'm finding likely hard to read uh, i think he check for mat or spot cam has to be performed so some uh, yield stress has to be calculated so question is uh, which international code will give the close proximity to the field study i think for such loading event yeah uh, uh, yeah, this, yeah. The, the question author is uh, is a research student i believe. so yeah. Uh, yeah 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 if if i'm not getting your question right maybe you can uh, un unmute yourself and then ask but uh, i i hello i am arpit yes, parik yeah welcome uh, arpit uh, yeah my question is whenever the jackup is to be installed yeah yes. there there must be a pre loading check for yes. so that the tilting of the jackup or the jackup instability on bottom stability doesn't get disturbed yes right to yes. maintain that on bottom stability intact yes. we need to assess the right load calculation yes. uh, for the entire jackup structure yes as i believe it to be done properly 
So actually, yes. I am doing it in my research also. But yes. uh, I believe there is a no logical uh, theoretical consequences available internationally to do yes. it in right way. Much much not research paper is available in this area to predictive yes. assessment. If I have to do it, which from your field experience, can you suggest which international code is gives a better performance to the field study? Yes, uh, this two codes only is followed internationally mainly. This uh, SNAME and ISO. So as I have mentioned, and in these slides, these slides have been in display right now. So this I covered a little bit that there are three levels of check which are performed. So what we do actually, because the every Jacob is uh, having an associated, associated maximum preload defined by the uh, owner of the Jacob or the certifying agency, which needs to be yeah. applied yes. during the installation. And uh, actually, if we see the stability or assessment of uh, suitability of a Jacob, uh, this must be calculated. That means the lateral load, how much it is. So if the lateral load exceeds a certain limit, then higher level analysis is required. If it is not exceeding, then the lower level analysis, only leg penetration with the kind of maximum preload is sufficient. Because the maximum preload is designed in such a way that it is normally sufficient. If the brain capacity is all right at that particular level and there is no punch through risk, then it is all right. And if the Jacob uh, bottom is placed at very stiff soil or good quality sand, then there is no worry that during operation there is any threat of stability of the foundation. Because even if a little bit more settlement can happen, it will be very minimal in case of strong soil at the bottom of the uh, Jacob. But if it is an increasing soil profile and just sitting on a particular layer, then it requires yeah. further monitoring and further analysis, as you have said, that displacement and other stability of the structure itself. SNEM covers a lot of things inside. If you go inside, then you will find. Uh, we do not go to structural details, but that is what is my view. So SNEM has a lot of details. If you we go yeah, through I have already read SNEM much more, yeah. and I know that SNEM has also covered. But yes. my, uh, I have observed some some more details are covered by some DNVGL standard. Yes, I yes. think uh, is yeah. give a more better idea. Yes, yes. If you have yes. any focus on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So DNV does a lot of this kind of analysis, higher level analysis. So they have ah, their, higher level their analysis. Yes, yes, yes. But it is not thank always you, required. Thank you, sir. So yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Parik, Dr. Parik. Okay, I think the next one is, is it Dr. Prakasha? I mean, your, uh, is it Dr. Prakasha? Okay. I, he has appreciated your work. So <laughs> Thank nice you very much. Very nice to uh, see you, Dr. Prakasha, after a long, long time. Uh, Welcome, sir. I, I think that... Okay, so uh, I think there's one more question, uh, which is, which yeah. says, is, uh, you know, uh, if you have to, uh, you know, move the platform from uh, Mr. Hemant, I, I, I'm sure uh, uh, it says, how can you take out the legs before you move yeah. out the platform? So I'm not sure right. if it's Mr. Hemant or Dr. Hemant. I apologize okay. in advance. Okay, okay. Uh, welcome for this question also. So that I a little bit covered initially when I started the presentation. Because when the work is over at a particular location and the unit needs to be moved from that particular location to another location. So first thing it is done is that lowering of the hull to the sea surface and it, it comes into the floating condition again. And then uh, the legs are extracted. And as the legs are extracted, so the hull will be again going a little bit uh, submerged in the water so that the buoyancy force which will be available gives the reaction for pulling the legs. And as I have uh, said that the jetting system at the bottom of the Jacob spot can, which is used in case required, if the penetration of the spot can is in clay layer and the depth is significantly high, then there will be a lot of suction pressure from the bottom. Uh, it also depends on for what period the Jacob was installed at a particular site and what is the kind of uh, property of the soil, like permeability of the clay. Uh, so based on that, the suction force is uh, there. So to break that, the jetting is carried out and then it is pulled up. So it comes out and then the legs are uh, totally pulled out 
it, it, it is a little bit below the hull and then the unit is again towed away by using tugboats and if it is self-propelled, it can move on its own like Sagar Samrat has uh, its own propelling system. Uh, most of the rigs have, uh, are being towed actually from the side to another side. I think I'm clear about the answer. I think so. It was quite clear. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think next is Dr. Partha. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Partha, for uh, you know representing your uh, chapter as well. He has appreciated. Uh, we also thank have, you. Uh, we also have Professor Venkat Chalam. Thank you, Professor. Venkat. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Yes, sir. I think uh, Professor Venkat Chalam, if you can ask your question yourself, it will be nice to hear your voice after a long time. You can just unmute yourself and please, please, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And uh, I must say, Dr. Mantha's lecture was excellent. I Thank haven't you, heard sir. a lecture on spot camps for a very long time. Yes, sir. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I think what little I know about offshore engineering was. Learning that is when Dr. Prakasha was there in IIT Bombay as a student, long back. Yes. Yes. Actually, I had a little bit of association with offshore work, but that was more than third, three and a half decades back. Uh, we oh, had yeah. some soil samples from the Australia yeah. for soil testing, laboratory testing that was uh, brought by our Professor Kati in those days. He got a few oh. boxes of uh, offshore samples for testing in the lab. So that's how we got associated with. Then, you know, one question that is there in my mind is, in those days, we were told that there are calcareous nodules in the soil. Yes. So how are yes. they modeled? Which is a suitable constitutive model for that? Yes, yes. They are yes. not purely clay or sand. Yeah. Uh, actually, regarding calcareous soil, we encountered this kind of soil in Western offshore of India. And uh, in case of clay, it is found that it does not matter much in case of clay, so far as strength or other properties are deformation, stiffness properties are con concerned. But in case of sand, uh, it matters a lot because in calcareous soil, the, uh, the strength deformation characteristic is different. The grains are crossable and depending on the source of the calcareous material. So in case of uh, pile capacity, a lot of... Uh, its effect is considered in reducing the uh, skin resistance or in bearing of the piles. In case yeah. of jackup, also, we carefully assess the friction angle, actually. Anyway, in case of big uh, spot cans, a big foundation like a spot can, the codes like SNAM uh, recommends that we have to deduct the uh, friction angle by 5 degree, and that is what is done. Secondly, in case of calcareous soil, we conservatively assess the friction angle. And one thing I would like to say, in case of sand, actually, uh, the bearing capacity is mostly governed by other uh, uh, mechanisms of failure, not by general bearing capacity if they are multi-layer soil. Like uh, if there is a clay layer below the sand layer, even if it is uh, calcareous sand, so the bearing capacity is governed by the bottom layer. So it is a factor, yes. And in case of, uh, it is a sing single layer soil, so even if the, uh, the uh, friction angle is very a little bit, so penetration will be very only a little bit, not much, because even 25 degree, 30 degree friction angle gives a very less penetration for all these spot cans that we generally encounter. So calcareous kind of soil, we do not normally face a problem. Only problem is that in case of cemented soil, but the characterization is very difficult. Yeah, yeah cemented soil, correct. Yeah. And uh, since you have considered a number of uh, different situations, scenarios, uh, you know, uh, sand above clay, soft clay above hot clay, and so on. I was wondering, is there really so much variation in the Bombay high area, for example? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a map available showing the variations in the soil conditions in the Bombay area somewhere? Uh, we have all the soil profiles, actually, more than 300 okay. soil profiles. So there is no comprehensive map like this. Okay. But I know if you ask me any area, I know what is the kind of soil, overall soil condition, like okay. in Rotna area. And they're very soft soil up to say 60, 70, 80 meters below the sea floor. In basin area, we have a little bit of very soft soil, say one to three meters uh, below the sea floor. After that, there is a very stiff layer, uh, layer of soil. 
so it was actually exposed to onshore condition in the historical period and then it was submerged in the sea yeah in okay. bombay high it is very complicated soil it may be the multi layer soil with thin layers and cemented soils also so most complicated is bombay high bombay high is the most complicated soil condition mm -hmm. and i remember uh, yeah. 30 40 years back when we were uh, using when we were doing when we were doing some analysis of this uh, offshore piles we yes, were sir. using the py curves we were considering lateral loads we were using yes. the py curves to calculate the lateral deflection and so on yes, and we were particularly enamored by this berezantsev's method yes uh, you know which considered soil arching and all that now i didn't find you even mentioning that uh this uh, presentation is on spadkan and math bound bien oh, question we file design we use the py yeah that Here is the okay okay yeah, yeah. the py only that interactive analysis is carried out using the soil pile and structure together in softwares like sax or sesam and uh, for single pile analysis also even the interactive hmm. analysis is done with using the tz qz and py graphs uh with respect to the uh, soil layers and with respect to the uh, foundation size that is pile yes sir thank you thank you very much it was really a, a, it was a pleasure to listen to you very very lucidly presented very nice thanks thanks a lot sir yeah let me use this opportunity to thank dr juneja also uh, and uh, let me also appreciate the igs mumbai chapter for organizing this lecture and not only that for being active you know it's very difficult to find time to indulge in activities like keeping a chapter uh working active and so on one needs to really find separately time for all that in, in the midst of their busy schedule so i appreciate the, the igs mumbai chapter for continuing the activities of the chapter and organizing this lecture thank you all thank you sir thank you uh, i think uh, dr katti is also here uh, anand katti is yeah i know i saw yeah i saw his name i think i he deserves special uh, thanks for uh, reactivating or rejuvenating this for rejuvenating this uh, chapter yeah I, he recently went through uh, uh, health issues but he's still helping a lot oh i see i didn't know that okay so i uh, we've come to the end thank of you. this uh, can i uh, thank you ask everyone to just we'll take a selfie before we end so can you switch on your <laughs> camera uh manta sir can you stop sharing yes, because if you stop sharing then i think everyone uh, will be there so if you can just but uh, i think if everyone switches on their camera yeah so stop sharing i think that will work so i request people not to feel shy you know if you can <laughs> yes is it okay now Yes, it's okay. I think we're still okay. waiting for a few more to open their uh, camera. Okay. I'll take a screenshot, but I think uh, please. So I'm looking at this Sahil girl for the first time. I have been teaching him, I think, for last one semester, <laughs> and I do not know how he looks like. <laughs> Okay. Uh Desh Pandey sir, uh, if you can switch to online lectures. Please. Online lectures, that's why. That's why. <laughs> I actually we have not even met any one of the student now. So if they come to us uh, uh, we have no clue who these people are. <laughs> I see some familiar names there. Dr. Parsarthi is there. Uh, Dr. Deshwani is there. I know Dr. Parsarthi. He's got a big beard now. Less of uh, head hair and more beard. doctor sandeep deshpande is there yes he is sandeep uh, yeah. vbd is there to deshmukh your camera please yeah, i'll just take a screenshot i think you all can take a screenshot at your end as well
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.